Hola amigos, hola amigas, Dorian here from Hoovalux. Welcome, bienvenido, croissui, salam alaikum. Welcome to the channel. Howdy y'all, because I'm here with an American vacuum. I'm here with the rainbow SE. And yesterday I polished it up, cleaned it up, and made it look a lot better than it did before. So what we need to do today is actually give it a full house demo. So I'm quite pleased to use this because the profile on it is quite low on the head. I should be able to get down underneath the carpets and under areas where other vacuums do fail in that um, aspect. So it'll be good to actually see how it works. Now, what I need to do is put some water in the tank. There are no bags with this machine. There are no filled, um, no, um, it's, it's, oh, how can I explain? The filter and the bag is this tank. Now this tank fills with water. If I can just undo it. If I can remember how to undo it. Do I have to squeeze this? Yeah, there we go, I just squeezed that. And the this is the tank that you fill up with water. There's a little pip in the middle of it and you fill the water up to the level of that pip and then that is what you it uses to uh, as, as the filter. I'm not explaining this very well, am I? <laughs> it's an unusual machine. It's been going for donkey's years in America and you can actually buy these new as well. They're very, very expensive. They're a bit like the Kirby home care system. They come with an array of attachments uh, and they can also be used as an air purifier in a sealed room as well. So what I'm going to do, let me show you. Inside here is that little pip. So you fill the water up to that level and then you do your cleaning. So first thing I'm gonna do is to put some water in this. Okay, so I filled the tank up with water up to that level. So what I'm gonna do now is pop this into the base. There we go. And what someone suggested I could do is to put some a couple of drops of uh, fabric softener in the water to make it smell nice. So we were in Asda earlier, so I picked up this Comfort Perfume Deluxe Ultra Concentrated Heavenly Nectar Fabric Softener. Oh, it smells really nice. And I'm literally gonna put in a couple of drops. That is it. And see if that makes a difference with the smell. So the next thing I have to do is to pop the top on, the motor, attach the base like so, so that is now clipped in, plug in the front, plug in the power, like so. And we are basically ready to vacuum. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug it in. It's got a lovely long cord on it, so I'm going to plug it into the hallway. And we will get cracking, so let's see how it does. So I'm going to have to film this a little bit wider than I normally do, because uh, it's quite a bulky thing to be lugging around. So I've got it switched on. Let's switch it on at the, main, uh, at the vacuum. And let's get vacuuming. Pull the trigger for it to start.
Okay, so what are my first impressions of it? Um, it's very good. It's got very good airflow and suction on it. Uh, I do wish the head was just a little bit heavier to put a bit more weight onto the ground because I didn't feel that the brush roll dug in far enough, but it's got quite good suction on it, so it did a good job of... It was okay, do you know what I mean? It's, uh, But it did do a good job of grooming the carpet, even on this one as I was going along. Um, my biggest fear is really basically of being afraid of um, tipping this thing over, because if you accidentally tip this over, that's basically it. <laughs> it's going to go straight into the motor and get sucked in and then bugger it up. So you've got to be... I was very wary of this, not catching it on anything. Whereas with a normal tub vac that's just like my like Henry or whatever, you just kind of pull it along and it bumps along things on its way and you don't have to worry about it and if it tips over, you just pick it up and carry on with this if you tip it over that's the end of the game so i was a lot more wary of it to be honest uh let me take off the top and let's have a look at the inside so here we have the fan there is a little bit of residual water coming from it there uh there's a little bit of water at the top but as you can see inside the tank it looks pretty manky if i lift this up you will see well, it's picked out of the carpet. And what's floating on the top. So, lots of fur. Let's put this back in. Let's put the motor unit back on. I mean, I guess, because it's got such a, a lip, if you did tip it over, it would have to go far. Do you know what I mean? But you still have to be careful of it. I'm always just very careful far more careful with this than I would be with a normal machine, um, cylinder vacuum. Right, let's clamp it back on. Let's put this back on. Let's plug it back in. There we go. But I do like it. It is, uh, it is a lot better at grooming and picking up than a standard turbo brush or a um you know bog standard sort of like floor head on it right let's move down to the next floor and let's crack on
Okay, so I have now finished vacuuming. We are done and dusted. Let's release the top. Oh god. And let's take a look at the tank. Yep. Anybody fancy cat fur soup? So that is what is pulled up. So I only use, I only vacuumed yesterday when I did the um, I used the DC01 distill. So I only did that yesterday. So that is what it picked up from the DC01 distill, and that did a really good job if you remember. There was a lot of stuff came out of it. Let's have a look in the tank there, you can see. Now, there's not a bad smell from it. So I really can recommend putting in a couple of drops of the fabric softener, because it does. It doesn't super smell nice. I mean, the fragrance you get out of it is, is subtle, which is quite nice. But yeah, I can definitely recommend putting in literally just a couple of drops of fabric softener. Now, someone said to me last time when I did this demo that I shouldn't tip it out through the front. So I don't even know which way otherwise to tip it out. So I'm gonna rinse it out thoroughly after I've finished. So I'm sorry, but I'm gonna tip it out through the front. So let me go and do that now. So I've done the first lot of emptying and the thing I noticed was a, a, quite a bit of the neon sand. I don't know if you can see it there, but the majority of the bits of muck that fluff and wherever came out through it. But I still found lots of that bloody neon sand. It gets everywhere. Okay, let me finish cleaning this out. So there we go. I have cleaned it out. I've also just roughly dried it off. I will leave it for a few days to completely dry before I put it all back together. I'm going to leave it there. Now let's take a look at this. <coughs> and I'm going to take you off the camera. Sorry, off the tripod is what I meant. So there's a little bit of fluff there. It's a bit wet. But this is completely dry. I'm just going to run the cloth around. This is not really a kind of sort of plug and play vacuum cleaner. It's like a Kirby or other machines. They're not exactly quick, quick whip around the vacuums. You can't use it without water. <clears throat> because, well, you have to have the water in it. Unless I'm mistaken, or there's newer models, but that surprisingly stays really, really dry because it causes kind of like a vortex. And the air comes in through here, pushes down into the water where it's filtered straight away, and then this then keeps the water around the outside like a, a like a tornado kind of thing. So this pretty much stays dry. It's a pretty ingenious design, and uh, it stood up to the test of time because it's not new. And that's not too bad. I've seen pictures of a lot worse than that. So anyway, let's just get this back on quickly. So in summary, good points and bad points. Good points is it's quite powerful. It's got very good agitation with the head and it does a really good job of grooming the carpet. Airflow suction, pretty good, no complaints there. I did find using the handle a little bit difficult when because you could twist it round but you kind of like get used to it and then it's fantastic for going flat down to the floor for doing under the beds and the chairs I had absolutely no issues whatsoever so that is really good and you can get deep in, deep in the bed, under the bed or under the chairs or furniture to give it a really good clean I didn't use any of the tools because I polished them up and I'm sure Ben will do a video on this coming up but uh, it certainly looks lovely and shiny you now after it's polished and I really enjoyed using it. So it would be interesting to to, to try a newer machine 
and see how that compares to this one. Negatives, it's like a Kirby, it's not really plug and play. Uh, you know, you, you have to prep it with the water, empty it each time at the end. I wouldn't really recommend leaving the water in the bowl because it would evaporate into the motor and, and wreck it. So you'd have to clean it out after every time or after every use. Um, bit bulky, bit heavy, um, and uh, the fear of knocking it over. I was petrified I was going to knock it over. It's not something you could just sort of like pull and tug. I was always sort of like fearful of it falling over. But apart from that, I really do like it. It did a really good job. And uh, yeah, I'm going to miss it when it goes. I'll tell you that. I am going to miss it. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe below for more videos. Check back and see what I've done so far. And maybe something there particularly fancy. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye, y'all.